following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. This was just the first part or three parts. Three parts, yeah? Yeah, this is just the first. So, if you have questions, I will try to answer. Why is the king blind? Because everything is like that. As you, for instance, you're blind. I am blind. Exactly. Right? But am I a king? Uh, well, suppose that uh, we should be king of nature, right? To be blind means that uh, we enter into this path blind. Right? It's part of us because that king is part of us. Hmm? Remember, there are two kings there. One is dead and the other is alive. Yeah. So, you have to make your analysis there is that we always uh, are divided right in two parts you know the Hasnamus one part is heavenly and the other part is right the Pandava of course are the heavenly things and the other part is lower part that we have so we are divided and that's the war that we have to make Uh, yeah he needs to resurrect. Uh-huh. So? Yeah, man. When Tanzu shot the arrow and killed, I guess it was supposed to be a male deer, right? So, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Seen it, right? So, what does that represent? Well, uh, if you analyze that, uh, obviously, it's utilizing the sexual forces in their own way killing, right? Because one kills with a sexual energy. Remember that uh, in, in the commandments of the Bible says you shall not kill. But that is uh, related we shall not fornicate. Because life is in a sexual energy. And when we start uh, doing work and we fornicate obviously we are killing. And then we are damned. Because that is, is you shall not fornicate or you shall not kill. It's the same thing. Well, the five brothers are children of the gods, right? With the same woman or with the same uh, or two women, in other words, right? The two women represent the two natures. Now, each one of us has the visual nature and the hidden nature. This is what we had to see. And we always uh, use the two natures in order to develop. What do you think the five uh, uh, brothers are? Yeah, they are the five bodies of the Bodhisattva. Right? The, the one that is to be born to be a king is Yuristira, which is uh, uh, the consciousness. 
place precisely in Yasod, because that's the first thing that is born, right, in us, the consciousness, which is related uh, with Yasod, Yasod in Da'at, you know, the forces. That's why uh, uh, the kingdom of God is always in the fourth dimension. Well, the strong one is the physicality. Mm -hmm. This is the two which are brothers are, of course, astral and mental bodies. And the, the one that is skillful with the arrow and the bow is uh, Arjuna, which is Tifereth. Because in Tifereth, we have the heart. And the causal body is uh, skillful in order to throw, to throw the, the, the arrows with the thought, but those thoughts are not from the intellectual mind, but from the spiritual mind, the abstract mind, which is Tifereth. And when somebody reaches uh, uh, the creation of the five bodies, that one is the same one, you see? It's, it's the Bodhisattva with the five bodies. And Arjuna, which is the Tifereth, this, uh, it, it, he wants uh, one wife, which is booty. Hmm? He wins, yeah, he wins uh, one wife, right? Obviously, it's booty because Tifereth is always married to the divine soul. The divine soul is, uh, what is the name? Dropadi. Dropadi is booty, the divine soul. And when Tifereth is being married to the divine soul, the rest, because it's the same individual, right? So our five married to one, which is Buddhi, and, and, the, and the five inferior sephirot. This is how you see it. Otherwise, if you don't analyze that, uh, you said uh, polyandry, right? <laughs> but really, inside of us, it's a polyandry, because it, we, have, we are five bodies, and when you marry Buddhi, which is the one that is close to, to Krishna. That's why Krishna is doing that prodigy before, before the, the, that soul or that woman. Because all the attributes, all the beauty of Christ is always in the divine soul, which is feminine. Right? That, that's, that's the beauty of it. So... The rest can be this grace, but not the divine soul. The divine soul is always close to the spirit, close to Krishna. Mm -hmm. The rest you see, of course, right? <coughs> yeah? How come Bhishma stands on the side of the blind king? Well, it's, uh, karma. Because obviously there is karma involved there. Well, it's like the guru, right? But uh, you see, he is in the side of the blind king, but at the same time, he is uh, very close to, to Krishna, right? And that's precisely the, the mystery there, because he's an initiate. But uh, he has to work both sides, even though he's in the side of the, of the blind king. Well, 12 uh, in Kabbalah is uh, uh, the apostolate. Uh, the way in which the initiate, when he enters into the wilderness, which means the direct path, hmm, there's going to be a war. Because uh, this is the dilemma precisely of the, of, of the Bodhisattva, when he enters into the union with Krishna, because there you see them, the five, talking to Krishna. And Krishna is Christ, in other words. And he says, uh, uh, the kingdom belongs to you. He says to Yurestira. He said to Yurestira, right? And uh, they're going to fight for that. But that kingdom is in the hands of the ego. Of the blind king and the rest of the egos that uh, is their, their family too. Because part of the consciousness is also there. It's part of them, you see? And... Uh, so they have to fight. And for that, of course, uh, it, it demands a sacrifice. 
when we are, one enters into the, the path direct, one needs to, uh, to pay what we owe, and that's 12, which is always that hangman, right? That touches the earth only with his thoughts. He has to give a lot in order to recuperate, right? His kingdom. And of course, that kingdom is the whole thing that we are fighting for inside of us. And obviously, uh, that's 12. 12 years, of course, it's not literal 12 years, but um, many months, uh, amounts of years that one is doing the work that we have to do. It could take uh, unknown time. And the 13, of course, is the decisive, right? Is death, in which uh, the annihilation has to be performed. And you can lose there, too. Because Karna is a brother of them, too. See? Because Karna is this, a child of the same woman. But they don't know it. Neither Karna. The only one that knows that is Krishna and, and, and the mother. But this uh, Karna wants to kill his own brother, but he doesn't know that he's his brother. Okay? Because he doesn't know who his father is, but his father is a son. Who is huh? Who is what do you think Karna is? Well, he's really? fighting against him, fighting against the Bodhisattva. But it's part of the Bodhisattva. It's part of the, this is his brother, yeah, Lucifer. This is how oh, I see it. The side of the sun, the negative aspect of the sun, you know. Yeah. Lucifer is the same sun, but acts pushing all the defects to battle in order to be disintegrated, and he in himself has had to be killed too. So I, was, I, was, uh, I was tripped up because uh, part of me thought the guy with the dice was Lucifer. Well, uh, part of him. Okay. But he's a tricky guy. He's a, obviously, that's part of the, of, yeah. of the ego. Right? The cheats. Right? Because this is what the ego does. He wants to win by cheating. Right? And he knows. The ego knows how to cheat. Right? But it's part of it. You can, we can say that is, uh, remember that there are many parts of the being there that are in, in, in the battle. Right? I mean, in the, in the game. Because now he has a game. And uh, another question? No, the, the, the battle, Kali Yuga is precisely the dark age. And everybody that starts, as we start, whether in any, in any age, we are in Kali Yuga, each one of us. And once you start doing that, the battle happens inside of you. You know what I mean? This is precisely the symbol of all of that. Of course... This is also related with something that happens in the Atlantean epoch, the beginning of the Lemuria, uh, of the Aryan race. But uh, this is how always the writers, the initiates, hide things, you know? And the way that this movie is written or made, I mean, is, is, is good because it shows everything but in symbols. Of course, if you read the Mahabharata, uh, will be good too. But that's very long. There are many volumes, I believe. So the little boy in the beginning is you. Mm -hmm. the, the little boy is the little child inside of us, right? That wants to. Our origin, the child, the consciousness, you know? That's the, the main thing. The, the child is our, ourselves, the consciousness. And why the story is about our consciousness, the origin of it, the embryo, the embryo, the, dat, the Buddha Datu, the embryo that is there, right? In the, well, it's, it's, it's a great thing. And this, as I said, this uh, uh, book, Mahabharata, is older than the Bible. 
So. Karna. It might uh, call it twin souls, but no. But uh, Arjuna represents the the causal body. Is the is the the causal the tiferet the human soul itself, right? And is part because that human soul is united with Krishna, which is the sun, S U N, the sun. But Karna is the son of the sun, or part of it. You see the the duality. We will say that Karna is a, a, the the twin brother, mm -hmm. because both of them. That's why he is very skillful. He says, "I'm going to do better than you," because he's the son of the sun. The rays of the sun penetrate everything, but Arjuna does it too. You see there the battle? That's why uh, in esotericism we say to win the battle you have to defeat Lucifer. But Lucifer, look, you awake and he is ahead of you. You awake more and he is ahead of you. Yeah. Always ahead. Because he, is, he sees everything. So to win to defeat the dragon, and that the, the dragon is, is Karna. This it is, it is beautiful. All of us have to fight against. The Bhagavad Gita is at the next, at the terms of next battle, right? Yeah, the battle uh, uh, there is called uh, the the chant of the Lord, the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually, the Bhagavad Gita comes uh, in the third. The third, the second. Yeah, but the Bhagavad Gita is just part of the Mahabharata, right. in which uh, there is a battle there, and, uh, and Krishna is advising Arjuna mm. and the rest of the brothers to teach them how to, to, how to win, because Krishna is the only one that is ahead of Karna. <laughs> Without Krishna, you cannot win. In other words, without incarnating Christ, the Bodhisattva cannot win. One is a Bodhisattva, one incarnates Christ. Otherwise, it's impossible to be a Bodhisattva without Christ, without Krishna. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,